ITV ditches claim about Prince William's staff planting stories about Harry from brother-in-law at war documentary. Um, in the 11th hour, they just decided that it was some fear of being a defamatory statement. And um, they just removed it. They decided they wouldn't do it. Now, of course, being here in the States, I have not seen it. That information was included in the documentary from Omid Scobie. So the Omid Scobie thing, good guy or bad guy, double agent, um, <laughs> everybody seems to have an opinion about him. But according to, you know, some people, he's not to be trusted. And first and foremost, he is a reporter. And I'll tell you another thing. He lives in the UK and his bread and butter is that of a royal reporter. So I'm not sure how much it would be to his advantage to absolutely isolate himself from the access that he has as a royal reporter and that he's had, you know, working for Harper's Bazaar and Good Morning America, ABC television. Um, you know, he there's only so much that he can do to go against the interests of the royal family and still have um, a foot in the door. So is that enough to say, well, you know, maybe, okay, let's look at it like this. What if Omid Scobie said that in the documentary on behalf of the palace? Maybe uh, the reliable source went directly to him. Maybe he didn't get it third or second or fourth party. Maybe they said it directly to him. And maybe that was done deliberately to either embarrass him or just to get that story out there. There's so many different scenarios that are at play here that you couldn't possibly know what was the purpose of this leak in the first place. And then look at it like this too. It has been leaked. It was omitted from the documentary, and yet the story is still out there. So this way, um, I almost said that thing that I hated that they repeated about, you know, cake. <laughs> you know what I mean? The one that they kept repeating to use against the Sussexes. But yeah, so that way they could kind of do that thing. And they could keep the story going without even having to air it on ITV. So if that's the case, why wasn't that like a surprise revelation on the actual ITV documentary? It's already leaked, so why remove it? It's out there. It's in the, um, you know, airways that this allegedly happened, so why remove it? So you know what? We can guess back and forth until the dogs come home and still never know exactly what was the point of this. But obviously, it was something that they wanted out there. And it was something that, that was designed to do whatever it was designed to do. Usually a distraction from something to do with the family. And so, well, that's that. It's out there now. So you may as well have included that in the documentary since we all know about it. I don't know. I, it's too, too many moving parts. And Omid Scobie, if you could hear my voice, are you a good guy or bad guy? Good cop, bad cop. Exactly what are you? Uh, we really don't know. We don't even know how old this kid is. Some days he's 40, some days he's 30, and then some days it looks like maybe I tripped over his dirt bike on the way into work today. You know what I mean? You, you never, you don't even know how old this kid is. So... <laughs> I don't know what to make of Omen Scobie, but there is a, a lot of things at play here. But forget about it for now. It's too much to think about. You know, the nation has just celebrated its Independence Day. It means different things to different people. Um, independence in the United States was um, not exactly a, a one-off event. It happened in stages for people. And so uh, there's a lot of people who have felt disenfranchised from the system for a long time. But uh, it is the, uh, na the nation's official 
Independence Day. So there's a lot of people that celebrate that. But I think in the future, you're going to see more celebrations for Juneteenth, uh, especially in the African-American community, because throughout the country, it wasn't really a thing in most parts of the country. But now that it's officially a holiday, um, we'll, we'll see that it, it actually gets some uh, recognition. So speaking of Independence Day, one could only speculate what was it like in Montecito for the uh, Independence Day celebration? I mean, was Harry actually out there on the grill? Or does that look too Prince Philip, you know? Or <laughs> you know, did, did Doria, um, you know, make anything? Or, you know, had did, like, Megan, like, guilt everybody into eating something incredibly healthy. Exactly what happened. Was it an organic Independence Day celebration or, you know, that, well, you know what, it's the weekend. And as we know, um, Megan is a flexitarian. So throughout the week, she's mostly vegan and vegetarian. And then on the weekends, it is omnivore time. So, um, <laughs> no, not omnivore. What am I saying? It is carnivore time, yeah. So she's a flexitarian, so I guess that makes everybody a flexitarian. But I tell you what, there is one member of the royal family who I suspect would make a mean potato salad because I think it's in her DNA. <laughs> and that is the spitting image of Queen Charlotte. Yes, that's right, Afro Annie. Something just tells me Afro Annie could make a mean potato salad. She probably doesn't even know she could do it, but I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure Afro Annie could could really make some mean potato salad. It's is in her blood. I won't go into a lot of detail to because it's a holiday weekend. A lot of you guys have Monday off. So why don't we take some time off from all of the negative stuff? But um, there's going to be like <laughs> a whole year of it ahead of us of this, um, you know, will she or won't she, will he or won't he, will they be there, won't they be there. And unfortunately, you guys, it just goes on and on. What I'm hoping for is that the Sussexes would get back to work soon. And if they're involved with other things and we have a like a good idea of what's on their calendar, like for instance with the... Um, podcast they have hired someone to work on the podcast and so i guess they're going to be you know producing some content for that soon so let's keep our fingers crossed that that is uh in the works even though they're supposed to have a parental leave um you know the sussexes always work the thing that i'm hoping is that we can like get a break from the tabloidy stuff that has been happening um, non-stop since they stepped back, but it has intensified for some reason to the point of the unveiling of the statue. But then I'm, you know, thinking, okay, well, now that that's over, but now then that takes us to the Jubilee and so on and so on and so on. And this is going to just continue to, to slow roll until it builds up enough momentum that who knows, you know, I guess it just really, the momentum is the tabloid's bank account. But so, well, we have that to deal with. But again, let's not even like dive into that for right now. Let's just enjoy our holiday weekend. I'm doing an update because, um, you know, Tina and Michelle was off today. And while I am nobody's Tina and Michelle, <laughs> or probably I should say off yesterday because uh, by the time you hear this, but I'm nobody's, I'm like a poor man's Tina and Michelle. 
but um, yeah, since they were off, I, I'm going to look at a few of the questions or comments that I thought was very interesting in the comment section. You guys, I do actually read as many as I can, but it's getting to the point where I miss a few. But after I post, I dive into the comments because I'm trying to get rid of the trolls. And we've been very fortunate on this channel that we're not like plagued with so many trolls. But I know a few of them uh, sneak into the reply sections every now and again. So someone asked me if I would uh, make a video about Sarah Vine. Uh, I, I kind of want to avoid that for now. Um, I guess when I'm on a rant and I've had like a big cup of coffee and I'm just really feeling that way, then I'll, I'll jump into it. But for now, um, I'd rather just uh, avoid that one because uh, I'm, I'm like on a positive kick right now. And, and even though I'm, I'm good at like dragging when I get the urge to do it, um, for my own well-being, I try to avoid it. And then the uh, the weird one was, the, um, I guess it wasn't so weird, I mean, but someone um, wanted me to uh, speak about Peter Phillips, and Peter Phillips is a very stoic figure on the balcony, isn't he? And I don't know so much about him, but of course, um, you know, his mom is Afro Annie. You know, Peter Phillips is not really a, a working royal, and it just really wouldn't be worth um, going after him because I haven't heard him say or do anything anti-Sussex. But if I did, then, you know, um, it, it's time to drag. But if you know of something, tell me about it and I'll get a big cup of coffee and have at it. But Tongue Ring Tindo, I, I do have it in for her because of those, you know, during the wedding, she was giving that rather um, eye roll and side eye and stuff like that. And I just thought that was really disrespectful, as though you've never seen like a very, I guess, evangelical like uh, speaker in a, a church before. And of course, I'm speaking of Reverend Curry. But uh, yeah, I thought that was very disrespectful. Um, at Meghan and Harry's wedding. So uh, that one I kind of got an in for. Um, just about everyone who did the eye roll that day, you know, <laughs> I, I took names. Oh, and one more thing. I don't know if I ever mentioned this before, but uh, the music um, with uh, Afro Annie is actually called Barbecue. <laughs> so very appropriate for today. That's it for now, so for the rest of this holiday weekend, which includes Monday, just remember you guys, as the Duchess always says, no bad energy. No bad energy, remember that. But next week, we'll drag those that need to be dragged. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Seems like I'm just like itching to drag somebody, but no. Um, no bad energy. We'll try to avoid dragging anybody. As long as you don't come after the Sussexes, then we won't have to, um, you know, unpack the adjectives.